Uh, thanks, Amrit. Good, yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, despite the COVID hit, there has been a resilience in the performance of the Indian specialty chemical sector. While some end user segments such as textiles saw dip, other segments such as agrochemicals, flavors and fragrances saw surge. Going to which, at an aggregate level, when we look at the sector, the sector exhibited an increase in revenues in FI 2021 vis a vis FI 2020. Not only the revenues, the profitability of the sector also witnessed an improvement aided by lower raw material prices, especially in nine months FI 2021, going to low raw material uh, prices uh, derived from crude oil. However, the Indian chemical industry, which is uh, of about 178 billion USD, remains much smaller than China's, whose size is about 1.5 trillion USD. And accordingly, there is a lot of potential for growth. One of the key impediments in the growth of the sector remains the dependence on imports for raw material for several subsegments. Keeping in mind the vast growth potential of the sector, the GOI has reduced the import duty on naphtha in the budget of 2021-22 and imposed anti-dumping duties on several products. Uh, to give uh, more in-depth uh, uh, on, the, on the sector, I now hand it over to Mr. Sai Krishna to begin the presentation. Yeah, thank you, Prashant, uh, and a very good afternoon to everyone. So over the next 20 minutes, uh, me and my colleague, Mr. Varun, will take you through an overview of the specialty chemical sector, the opportunities and challenges in the sector, the steps taken by the government to support the sector, trends in the key subsegments, and the credit rating movement in the last one year. So the Indian specialty uh, chemical sector is estimated to be around $32 billion and accounts for around 18% of the overall chemical sector in India. The sector enjoys higher margin compared to the basic and petrochemical segment due to the higher value addition. The segment has both organized and the unorganized players with the latter at the lower end of the value chain. India is a net exporter in key specialty chemical segments and in the last one decade several players have scaled up uh, and increased their presence in the global supply chain and cramped segment. So between 2014 to 2019 the domestic sector is estimated to have grown at a CAGR of 12.2% compared to 5.7% growth in the global specialty chemical segment during the same period. Nonetheless, it accounts for only around 4% of global market and there is immense potential for growth. Agrochemical segment accounts for around 30% of the market, followed by the dyes and pigment segment, which accounts for around 22%, surfactants, which account for 6%, and the remaining comprising of other sectors like uh, construction chemicals, textile chemical, water chemical, etc. The overall sector has presence of both the organized and unorganized players, with the unorganized sector estimated to be around 30, having 30% 30 market share. The presence is high in sectors like agrochemicals, dyes, flavors and fragrances, and construction chemical, although they are at the lower end of value chain with lower margins. Majority of the industry is concentrated around Gujarat and Maharashtra due to factors like good port connectivity availability of skilled manpower, business-friendly policies, and infrastructure. In the specialty chemical sector, in the last decade, several segments have witnessed healthy scale-up, uh, dominated by the agrochemical sector, which has the largest number of companies with more than 500 crore turnover, followed by the dyes and pigment segment and flavors and fragrances, etc. As discussed earlier, the margins of the specialty chemical segment are relatively higher compared to the basic and petrochem segment, and the volatility in this segment is also lower. Within the subsegments, also the margin improves based on the value addition and specialization. And this is especially true for segments like dyes and pigments and flavors and fragrances. Going forward, due to the several factors providing growth opportunity for the segment and uh, the inherent strength of the industry, it is expected to grow at a CAGR of around 12.2% till 2025 at a higher base compared to the earlier five year trend. We will next discuss the opportunities, trends, and challenges. So the Indian specialty chemical industry has several strengths, which includes availability of low cost and skilled manpower, relatively better intellectual property right regime, track record of relationship with global players in certain segments like uh, agrochemicals and pharmaceutical, etc. And finally, push from the government to increase the domestic production and exports under the Atmanirbhar Bharat policy. 
Further trends like diversification of supply chain sought by global players under the China plus one strategy also provides opportunity for growth. The domestic market also has high growth potential due to low per capita consumption, which is expected to increase with the growth in per capita income, changes in consumption pattern and increased adoption of global practices by various end user industries. However, there are several challenges to achieve the potential, which includes high dependence on imported feedstock, lack of scale in many sub-segments, ESG risk and compliance issues, and low R&D spent by the industry. To elaborate on the China plus one opportunity in the chemical sector, China accounts for around 36% of global chemical market compared to just 6% of Indian chemical sector. However, with growing regulatory restrictions in China related to pollution control, which had led to closure of facilities, increasing labor cost, geopolitical tension with some of the larger Western countries, and disruptions due to COVID-19, uh, all these factors have forced the global players to look for diversification in supply chain, and India is poised to be the beneficiary due to the inherent advantages it has. To elaborate on the strength of the domestic speciality uh, chemical sector, there are two strategies which have been adopted by successful Indian players who have scaled up and moved up the value chain. One is to focus on niche segments and few molecules and then improve the production process, add capacities and focus on few molecules to gain market share in the domestic as well as global market. Over the years, investment in complementary technology and acquisitions have also strengthened the position. The other area is in contract research and manufacturing service, where Indian companies have strong track record in pharma and agrochemical segment, and India's IPR policies provide an advantage here. The industry has witnessed strong M&A activity in both the global as well as domestic market. Some of the recent M&A activity in the domestic market includes Pedilite's uh, acquisition of a uh, Huntsman unit for Araldite, and in current year, Rosary Biotech has acquired two companies, Unitop as well as TriStar. And uh, Safex Chemical has acquired Shogun Organics. So the reason for m and include uh, scaling up, uh, technology acquisition, product expansion, new market entry, and process improvement. The sector has also been investing in capacity buildup and the trend uh, the sector has also been investing in capacity buildup and had gone for IPO as well as attracted PE investments in last few years, uh, which has helped in this capacity expansion. Uh, going forward, the trend is expected to continue and based on a sample of 21 listed entities across specialty chemical subsegments, ICRA expects that around 150 billion uh, rupees, 150 billion worth CAPEX investment is expected over the next two years. Apart from the strengths of the Indian uh, sector and steps which the industry has taken, the government has also taken several measures which provide support. And these includes rationalization of duty structure, measures to prevent misuse of FTA and anti-dumping duty imposition on several petrochemicals to support the domestic industry. All these measures are expected to help the domestic chemical industry and specialty chemical industry will be helped because of uh, improved availability of uh, feedstock locally. To reduce the import dependence, apart from these measures, the government is also taking steps like cluster-based development through PCPIR, Petroleum Chemical and Petrochemical Investment Region Development, uh, improved logistics and potential performance linked incentive schemes also. Currently, the performance link, uh, linked incentive scheme has been announced only for APIs. However, it is expected that some of the other chemical segment might also uh, come under the ambit of PLI schemes, which should be beneficial for the sector. For environmental challenges, uh, it has come out with, uh, government has come out with the draft chemical safety rules. For low R&D and tech adoption, uh, the government is providing guidance on IPR to, especially to MSMEs and smaller companies. It is also setting up center of excellence in the petrochemical segment, which will again aid in improving the feedstock availability domestically. Apart from these, the other support measures are uh, public procurement policy and favorable public procurement policy and export of promotion schemes, which are also expected to help the domestic industry. I would now request uh, my colleague, Mr. Varun, to discuss about the COVID-19 impact on the sector. Over to you, Varun. Yeah, thanks, Sai. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So COVID-19 has been one of the most integral part of our lives over the last one year. 
uh, and same has been for the specialty chemical segment as well uh, during the first wave uh, covid 9 of covid 19 uh, the sector was impacted severely i'll bet for a very short span of time the industry faced shortage in terms of labor availability uh, logistics were also impacted because of containment measures as well as uh, movement restrictions uh, the demand was also impacted in the initial phase of the lockdown uh, uh, due to the covid-19 uh, pandemic and uh, the same however re recovered very sharply after q1 fy21 uh, in terms of the liquidity uh, the sector was no different from other parts of the industry where liquidity impact was felt because of the increase in the collection period and all but uh, several steps taken by RBI to uh, alleviate the liquidity stress in the market um, did support this particular segment as well. Uh, coming to the wave two, uh, just like other industries, this time the specialty chemical segment was also well prepared. Uh, several labor uh, issues were resolved by providing accommodation at the site of manufacturing. Uh, logistics remained uh, more or less unaffected only uh, uh, facing certain issues when the COVID-19 uh, second wave peaked in May 2021. Uh, however, there have been only minor hiccups. Uh, the demand from the domestic sector, which was impacted in May 21, uh, was made up by the export sector. Uh, the liquidity uh, war, uh, impact was there, but it was uh, much lesser as compared to what we saw in wave one. Uh, if you look at the segment performance, as we have discussed that um, over the last several quarters, it has been a, a positive impact on the, uh, we have seen positive impact on the segment. Uh, the, uh, the performance of the segment came under pressure in Q1 FY21 in the immediate aftermath of the COVID-19 lockdown. Uh, however, uh, uh, after that in Q2 and Q3, we saw uptick in the margins as well as the demand. So we see, uh, as you can see, uh, the revenue growth has been very healthy year on year as well as q on q uh, in q4 uh, there was some impact on the margins uh, and which has also reflected in q1 fy22 because of the raw material price inflation which the in sector although has found slightly difficult to pass on to the end consumers uh, and particularly in q1 fy22 when there was impact of the covid second wave of uh, covid 19 uh, going forward, we expect the sector to post double digit revenue growth over the next couple of years, driven by uh, recovery in the domestic as well as the global economies uh, as they come out of the lockdowns and restrictions that are uh, currently crippling the uh, free movement of goods as well as uh, people. And uh, with the rising vaccination rates, we expect that uh, we might recover to the uh, normal times that we were used to in the past. Uh, the operating margins of the segment, uh, we will see some uh, moderation in FY22, mainly because of the raw material price inflation. Uh, nevertheless, the margins will still remain uh, pretty healthy, uh, which will support cash generation. And uh, in terms of the uh, coverage indicators are also expected to improve, given that the, uh, the segment has uh, undertaken a lot of CAPEX in the last three years, and we should start providing benefit to this particular seg uh, uh, to the industry. Uh, so now we look at the uh, trends and outlook for key sub segments of the specialty chemical segment. Uh, so uh, the key segments that we look at include agrochemicals, dyes, pigments, surfactants, flavor, flavor fragrances, fluorochemicals and construction chemicals majorly. So agrochemicals, as Sai had also uh, pointed out, it's the largest share of specialty chemical segment in India followed by dyes and pigments. So, and as you can see, uh, agrochemical markets are more mature part of the uh, specialty chemical segment. So they, they are expected to grow at a medium rate of 78% while as we move across the, uh, the spectrum of specialty chemicals, the, ten, the growth rate tends to uh, spike up. Coming to the agrochemical uh, sector specifically so india is the fourth largest producer of agrochemicals uh, with large scaled up players having more than 500 crores of uh, revenue uh, the sector currently constitutes around 40 to 45 percent of unorganized sector but that is mostly on the formulation side where the uh, the the capital intensity as well as the technical intensity tends to be lower 
uh, india is however india has developed itself into a major exporter of agrochemicals uh, globally uh, with major destinations being the us and the brazil which are the two key agrarian economies of the world uh, while currently if you look at the uh, portfolio uh, the mix of uh, pesticides getting consumed in india so insecticides uh, are the largest uh, in terms of the volume however if we look at the herbis uh, fastest growing segment that tends to be the herbicide segment uh, because of the changing farmer uh, uh, preferences as well as uh, because of the availability uh, issues of labor in terms of in the rural markets uh, in terms of exports as well the herbicide segment continues to be the fastest growing uh, as it reflects the inter uh, the the international demand uh, in the western markets herbicides tend to have a higher share or in terms of the overall consumption of the pesticides uh, in terms of the impact on covid 19 this particular segment did not face any major impact in uh, because of the covid 19 and that was mainly because uh, this is part of the agri input sector and a government of india at that point in time took a uh, special interest in supporting the agri sector so this sector did not face any major issues and uh, at that point in time uh, monsoon was also good the spatial as well as the temporal distribution was also good so that also provided tailwinds to the offtake if you look at the current market size of uh, agrochemicals in india it's around 5.8 billion dollars and it's expected to grow to 8.9 billion dollars by end of fy25 and that is expected to be driven by both domestic offtake as well as growth in the uh, export markets uh, in terms of the domestic offtake, uh, given that we have pro low crop yields, uh, farmer awareness has been rising. Uh, we expect that the domestic agrochemical application intensity is expected to rise in India, which lags significantly uh, uh, if we compare with the international levels. Uh, also, uh, in the next four to five years, we have around four to four point two billion dollar worth of, of uh, molecules coming off patent in the uh, pesticides market. So that provides uh, quite a bit of opportunity to the Indian agrochemical players to scale up and produce these uh, generic molecules and uh, act as a major exporter in the global markets. Uh, the also, uh, as uh, we have discussed in the past as well, so uh, CRAMS and CSM services capabilities are also improving in India. Uh, we have access to low cost, high tech, high highly educated uh, people in the country. So those, this particular uh, sector is also expected to rise. Uh, the industry, however, remains exposed to agroclimatic risk and regulatory risk, given that these are hazardous in nature uh, chemicals. Uh, also development of pest resistant GMO crops uh, also post a major threat to the agrochemical optic. Albeit the same remains a low probability uh, threat to the near, in the near to medium term. Uh, our outlook for the sector remains stable. Uh, the issue there has been a uh, issue of ban on 27 pesticides that started in May 2020. The government of India came out with a notification. So as of now, it remains in work uh, works, and um, we have not heard from government of India which uh, chemicals will get banned. But our expectation is that uh, whatever chemicals will get banned will have a lower impact on the industry vis-a-vis -vis what the original ban would have around 66 percent of the total production. Now, moving on to the uh, dyes and pigment segment, uh, the demand was impacted significantly in H1 FY21 as the sector derives majority of its demand from the textile segment, uh, which remained under pressure. Uh, there was some improvement in H2 FY21 as the economy slowly opened up post the, uh, as uh, the lockdown restrictions were eased. Uh, with the opening up of the economy and pickup in economic growth, we expect that the sector is sector will witness improvement in the demand, uh, which is also expected to find some impetus uh, from the China plus one strategy as global players look at de-risking their supply chains. Uh, the sector remains cyclical with raw material volatility driven by crude oil prices. And the sector also remains exposed to the ESG risks uh, in line with the other chemical players as well. We expect that the Indian dyes and pigment uh, sector will grow through a 10% CAGR through the next five years and uh, driven by healthy domestic demand and rising export opportunities. Uh, our, exp our outlook on the sector remains stable. So uh, in terms of flavor and fragrances, uh, India remains a smaller uh, player in the global market, but in part certain particular segments, uh, India is a major player, particularly in the natural 
flavor and fragrances segment for example in menthol uh, it is um, the segment is expected to grow at a healthy pace of 15% cagr uh, going forward uh, over the next 4 to 5 years and this will be driven by premiumization of personal and home care products uh, rising rural penetration which will give philip to fmcg of take and rising uh, preference towards uh, natural products uh, the industry faces risk from substitutes uh, the which are mostly developed through the chemical routes and agroclimatic risk as well uh, the outlook on the sector remains stable uh, coming to the surfactants and uh, personal care segment um, so for surfactant majorly find use in the uh, home care segment that is detergents and all uh, followed by personal care and the industry segment uh, the segment remains unorganized given a large share of the soaps and detergents uh, manufacturers also being part of the unorganized segment uh, the sector which has witnessed tailwinds because of covid-19 as the uh, 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 the awareness towards maintaining health and hygiene has improved significantly over the last one and a half years uh, the sector is expected to grow in double digits over the next course of next 4 to 5 years uh, driven by rising awareness about health and hygiene Uh, which has further accentuated post the covid-19 pandemic so uh, our outlook on this particular sector is also stable uh, coming to the construction chemicals market so this market had witnessed significant headwinds in first half of fy21 because of the lockdown impacting the construction activity however uh, in the second half of the year we saw some improvement in the offtake because the construction activity picked up um uh, going forward our outlook on the sector remains stable given that the expectation of increasing spend on the infrastructure uh, low per capita consumption of chemicals as well as improving industry practices uh, the sector remains exposed to the interest rate environment as well as government spending uh, which can impact the infrastructure spending and also demand for these particular products uh, some of the other specialty chemical uh, products include textile chemicals polymer additives and uh, water chemicals these tend to be a smaller size uh, in the overall scheme of things but um, in terms of textile chemicals these are highly fragmented uh, with large number of unorganized players uh, growth in textile sector and uh, will be driven by uh, growth in the textile se- sector and increased value addition to uh to the overall chemical space will drive the growth for this particular segment uh this segment remains uh, exposed to the volatility in the textile segment as we saw in the first half of fy21 uh in terms of the water chemicals um the growth will be driven by demand for effluent treatment uh, plants uh this segment is more organized and is dominated by domestic players only Uh, in terms of polymer additives it includes uh, plasticizers and um, higher value added segments such as flame retardants etc so growth will be driven by end user industries like pipes consumer du- consumable durables wires and cables so our outlook on these sectors is also positive stable now uh, coming to the ikra rated universe of specialty uh, chemical segment <laughs> Uh, about 13 uh, about 13% of the uh, companies are in non investment grade while 44% of the uh, rated portfolio is above uh, a rated cat- in a, in a category rated a uh, and uh, in fy21 there were five upgrades uh, while a couple of companies were put on positive outlook as well some of the key rating actions uh, taken since march 2020 are on your screen right now so with this we have come to the end of our presentation and i would like to hand over the presentation to mr prashant washish uh yeah thanks varun uh i would now, now like to invite our distinguished guest and panelist mr sunil chari to share his views and insights on the specialty chemicals industry and throw some light on the trends and outlook of the sector Uh, in the meantime uh, i would also request the attendees to type in their questions in the q and a chat box which we could post to mr chari so over to you over to you sir uh, namaste and good afternoon to all in ikra and uh, all the guests in this uh, presentation uh, the presentation was very nice and eye opener uh, when somebody asked me the outlook for the specialty chemicals i say i am my partner दोनों का मिला के तीनों बच्चे आर जॉइनिंग द बिजनेस सो आई थिंक देट कैन बी मोर पॉजिटिव आउटलुक फ्रॉम माई साइड इंडस्ट्री इज गोइंग एट मोर देन डबल डिजिट 
uh, which we can see from the presentation also uh, that is going from 32 billion, 32 billion to 64 billion. So one big thing which you need to understand is what is our percentage in the world global market? And we are less than 5% in the specialty chemical market. So the market size is huge and the opportunity is huge. Now, this is one thing which I have learned, you know, uh, sky is the limit and the specialty chemical market in India, uh, sky is the limit. Now, if you see, you know, sectors like uh, fluoro uh, chemicals, sectors like agrochemicals, uh, sectors like uh, flavors and fragrances, uh, the outlook looks, you know, more better than others uh, as for the presentation which we have seen. And uh, this is also seen in the ground reality. Uh, the Indian market, domestic market is something also which is growing very, very strongly. Uh, so the, as the Indian economy grows, uh, my personal feeling is uh, that uh, the opportunities for Indian specialty chemical industry is manifold, both domestic and export. Now, uh, in areas, where do we where do we go? Where do we focus? Uh, the world is going digital. The world is going digital. Uh, everything is on a mobile, or most of you would be listening to me on on a mobile screen or an iPad or a laptop. Uh, it is no longer physical presentation, and the devices are becoming smaller and smaller. When you see a device, everything is chemical, uh, right from LCD, the liquid crystal polymers, uh, to everything inside is made of some chemical. Uh, now, the, the, the focus for Indian specialty chemical and industry is how do we latch onto this bandwagon uh, of going into areas uh, where the world specialty chemical majors are going. Uh, IoT, Internet of Things, uh, mobility, uh, electric vehicles is something which is, which is like a future. Uh, 5G is another one. Everything we talk about, everything we see, everything we listen, uh, we have a chemistry angle to it. Uh, new materials are something which is going to help us grow. Uh, now, the Indian R&D spend is not very high. And typically, Indian specialty chemical companies do not have big scale. And because we did not have big scale, uh, there was no possibility for us to uh, put a lot of money in R&D. Um, but now we cannot, you know, have this excuse of not putting money in R and D. The future is, uh, if we want to be better than China, if we want to be better than uh, the US, uh, uh, you know, it is something where uh, India has to focus. Uh, I was uh, uh, discussing, you know, one, uh, you know, uh, today with one big, with with big banking CEO, and he says the Indian banking industry is far ahead of the world in terms of technology. If our software technologist can win the world, can put us on the top of the world, why cannot our chemical technologist put us on the top of the world? Uh, we are no less than anybody else now. And uh, this is something which needs to focus. Uh, the children today want to go into e-commerce. They want to go into, you know, uh, status, uh, focus on computers. Uh, but we need to create an ecosystem uh, for startups in the chemical industry. Uh, which could give us something like breakthroughs uh, in new chemical technologies and new, you know, uh, productions. Uh, till now, the Indian chemical industry was a copycat industry. This is not sustainable, clearly. This is something which will not gain us, uh, you know, rapid strides uh, in, uh, you know, market shares in wherever we are working on. Uh, the world is disrupting. Uh, if we don't disrupt ourselves, somebody else will disrupt us. Uh, so we have to be prepared for disruption in every part of the specialty chemical industry. Uh, coming uh, down to the ground reality now uh, in India, uh, you know, I was talking to the again the CEO of the banking, and you know, we have uh, CC at five percent or you know six percent. Uh, this puts us back. a few years ago. I used to cry. Uh, that I'm paying 10% uh, interest on my working capital. It is no longer so. Uh, the government has done so well uh, uh, because of liquidity. Uh, we are able to get, you know, pricing for our working capital or term loans, uh, which is on par with other countries in the world. Uh, this is no longer a limiting factor for us. Uh, so, uh, of finance also, uh, the rate is A1. Solubility of finance is immense now. So if you're a good company, if you're focused, if you're, you know, uh, well-governed, there's no, no dearth of finance, uh, which we are seeing. 
uh, other than banking finance, what I see is IPO. Uh, uh, Rosalia was the first company anywhere in the world in July 2020 launched IPO anywhere in the world. And the demand which we saw is phenomenal. We were able to get 40,000 crores of investment, uh, you know, as uh, in, 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 into into our bank accounts at that time. Uh, I, we could only keep 650 crores. Uh, if there is an opportunity to keep everything, I would be very really happy. Uh, but uh, uh, you can see the amount of money which is coming into all specialty in Indian industry. Uh, now, uh, India means second grade chale. So, uh, 10 plus 1, PLI, making everybody rush. And uh, what has happened in the API industry will happen similarly into all those who are rushing into the PLI, uh, PLI scheme. Uh, there will be over capacity. Uh, one thing which also what we are seeing is in the IPOs, uh, many commodity chemical companies are being classified as specialty chemical companies and getting high valuations. Um, the worry in the mutual fund industry, the worry in the banking industry is uh, that there will be over production and many of them will be hit with over capacities uh, in the next two, three years. So this is something which we need to be careful of. Uh, feed stock is something uh, which is which is a uh, area of concern now. Uh, we also at Rosalia are facing this, and a lot of our monomers have to be imported, and this is something uh, which will take time to correct. Uh, ESG is another big area of concern, you know, uh, of focus for all the companies. Uh, China has stopped polluting their mother earth. And we want to do that. And this is something which clearly should not happen. Uh, we should not follow China, uh, what China did mistakes 10 years ago, uh, and do the same mistakes now. It would be foolish. Uh, so the government should not allow anything which is polluting to come to India. Uh, if we put money in a polluting industry today, after two, three years, the government is going to stop it. So this is something which is not, not a you know, focus area. Uh, in terms of manpower, uh, if you ask anybody, nobody wants to do chemical engineering. Everybody wants to do electronics. Everybody wants to do something in digital, something in something connected with e-commerce. Uh, chemical industry needs skilled manpower. Uh, today, as you find, uh, it is difficult to find a dry, driver or a plumber or a carpenter in Mumbai. Uh, easier to find. Uh, you know, many accounts uh, professional or, you know, many computer uh, operators at 5,000 rupees salary and very, 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 uh, driver you have to pay 15, 20,000 rupees. So where is this? This is something which is an area for, for the industry to come together and focus uh, in, the, in the future. Uh, the last few months have been terrible for logistics and uh, we have had great issues with getting raw materials and paying the huge freight uh, freights have nearly, you know, become five to ten times now in many sectors now. And uh, there is a capitalization, the shipping companies are at the highest ever profits. Uh, we are also making profits, but uh, this is going to affect our profitability, uh, the specialty chemicals profit, profitability uh, in, in the coming months, uh, definitely. Uh, make in India has to become better. And we need to, you know, focus on areas where there's a lot of imports, uh, which is happening. Uh, in terms of mergers and acquisitions, uh, Rosary has done, uh, you know, three acquisitions recently. Uh, and uh, this is something which will grow uh, as the market matures and matures in India. Uh, IPO is one way of uh, monetizing, you know, whatever you have invested in the, in, in the past many years. And uh, the outlook for the specialty chemicals market, IPOs for the next few years looks very, very strong. So anybody uh, who has... Uh, you know, uh, possible to get market cap 2,000 crores and above uh, is good and right for uh, you know IPO. Uh, with this opening remarks, uh, uh, I throw open uh, the forum to questions. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chari. Um, we have already received uh, some questions over mail, and uh, I see the chat box uh, Q and A chat box is also quite buzzing. Uh, so, so begin with, sir, uh, you could, uh, you know, throw some light on some of the questions that are asked uh, by the participants. So what would it take? Uh, I mean, for example, sir, India's uh, exports have, uh, you know, uh, uh, climbed by about 5, 50 percent uh, during, uh, you know, the past uh, uh, decade, while few countries like Vietnam have been able to, you know, grow much more. 
So what would unleash the uh, animal spirits in this sector as per you? It's definitely economy of scales. Uh, at this moment, if you, we are not, uh, you know, bearing a few, uh, you're not still global scale. Uh, so for example, you know, uh, uh, we, we are not backward integrated into also the raw materials. Uh, so I can, I can do, you know, a building block like uh, acrylic acid, there's no manufacturer in India, uh, BPCL is starting now. Uh, so suddenly if we, we have the manufacturing capacity to make uh, 30,000 tons of polymers a month, uh, but do we have the raw material? No. Uh, yeah, so uh, if I have to get the raw material from imports and now with the shipping, so there is, uh, so the animal spirit will come uh, when the raw material is available uh, locally. For example, if you see ethylene oxide today, uh, there is only one producer reliance and uh, it's a big, big shortage. Uh, we have had huge orders, but there's no raw material available. Uh, so this is something which, which will help uh, uh, unleash the animal spirits in, in the future, I think. Sir, related to this, uh, what would be your ask from the, you know, the government? Uh, what would be your wish list? Feedstock, uh, availability of monomers, uh, you know, for companies like us, uh, you know, would be something uh, which would be the ask. And second is uh, uh, setting up infrastructure for R&D. Uh, if we want to go away from commodities and focus on specialties, uh, specialty or especially on mobility, chemicals used in the mobility industry like electric vehicles, uh, chemical use in IoT, uh, especially digital, uh, you know, uh, miniature, miniaturization of devices, liquid uh, crystal polymers, uh, and everything going into mobile. Everything is mobile now. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are spending more and more time on, on our mobile, and so is our children. And uh, this trend is not going to go anywhere. Uh, so uh, we need to put money in R&D. Uh, Rosari has been given space at IIT Pawai, and uh, we are thankful, you know, to the government. Uh, you know, an entrepreneur like us, I hail from a middle class family with no uh, money, no business links, you know, and no access to money. If we could do this, uh, there could be lakhs of uh, Sunil Chari and Edward Menezes in India, uh, you know, which can unleash the animal spirit. Uh, the government has done very well. Uh, definitely, uh, if you see, you know, uh, compared to what we saw 10 years ago, uh, today it's a different, uh, you know, game. Uh, now, also, uh, one thing which we need to do is, uh, you know, become very, very big in thinking. Uh, if you see the size of chemical plants in India and size of chemical plants in China, um, they are 10 times bigger. And, and the economy also has become 10 times bigger. Uh, we need to invest and be ready, uh, you know, for the boom. Right, sir. So, sir, uh, you know, you raised a very, very pertinent point uh, of, uh, you know, a raw material availability being an issue because anybody who's processing here could also process in China and sell directly. So, uh, the transportation freight becomes a, um, a added cost if we process in India by importing from China or other countries. What are companies doing, sir? I mean, there are obviously uh, chemicals like acrylic acid uh, that you mentioned, or uh, uh, you know, acetic acid, uh, you know, PVC, which are uh, uh, you know building blocks, but uh, are uh, heavily imported into this country. But uh, there are others as well where you know some bit of backward integration can be done. So, what are companies looking at? You know, or what is your company also looking at for correcting this feedstock dependence kind of a, uh, you know, uh, import dependence of for you know uh, ensuring their growth as well as uh, you know the uh, supply chain. We have to look at areas and feedstocks which are available in India now. So, what are, what are we are doing is uh, we are you know very. Uh, Eagerly waiting uh, for acrylic acid from uh, BPCL. They eagerly waiting you know, for good EO availability from the lands. Uh, but there are a lot of building blocks and monomers available which are made in India. Uh, so as a company, Rosari, and I, I think all uh, promoters in the specialty chemical industry uh, should focus on uh, what is available in India. So what is not can stop it, you can stop it, you can stop it. So what is available in India, opportunities in cash. Uh, we are one-eighth of China, uh, we are practically one-third or one-fourth of US and uh, Japan and Europe in terms of specialty chemicals. Uh, the opportunity is, is mind-boggling. Uh, so, uh, we still can grow. Rosary ko panjar krod banne mein 
ज्यादा टाइम दिखता नहीं है वी आर नियरली डबलिंग अवर टर्न टर्न ओवर यू नो कम्पेयर टू द लास्ट ईयर एंड यू सी अवर कैगर इन द लास्ट थ्री फोर ईयर्स वी आर गोइंग एट मोर देन थर्टी परसेंट एंड दिस इज समथिंग विच इज विच इज गोइंग टू टू वेरी वेल इन द फ्यूचर ऑल्सो राइट सर um uh, sir you also uh, mentioned about uh, you know uh, r and d spends now uh, traditionally uh, you know as a percentage of sales india has often uh, you know said to have low r and d spend so do you see that uh, as one of the key reasons why indians have lagged or the indian companies have lagged and uh, now uh, with more and more focus on r and d how do you see that changing what uh, percentage would you be comfortable or you know the industry as such would be comfortable as percentage of sales uh, going forward see anything between to 2 to 5% is something which is 2% is something which is minimum but uh, 5% would be a dream you know for any company uh, to have put uh, you know money in that okay okay Uh, sir uh, number of uh, you know in the specialty also you mentioned in your uh, talk uh, that uh, there is uh, some companies that are commoditized or uh, manufactured commodity chemicals are uh, you know branded as uh, specialty now uh, also sir there is uh, so what parts of the specialty per se like we see that you you had many years in the dyes and chemical uh, dyes and pigments industry and uh, some parts of that industry as well are and you know uh, are uh, uh, commoditized so uh, how does the what are the dynamics now uh, with respect to uh, you know commoditization of some of these chemicals which are becoming older and more and more Uh, companies have started manufacturing. Uh, so, what is your view on uh, the commoditization of some of the specialty chemicals? Uh, the trend for specialty chemicals has to be into areas where the consumption is growing. Uh, so, as I said, uh, uh, electric uh, vehicles, uh, mobility, uh, into uh, IoT, into you know devices which are you know uh, going to give uh, communication. Uh, Uh, which are going to make everything smaller uh, the focus has to go go there uh, the focus also has to go on sustainability uh, so you will see uh, you know uh, the indian pollution board standards in every state or the central pollution control board standards are the stringent in the world anyway uh, i'm telling you the fact truth when you compare with euro us in europe uh, so we have partners in us and we have partners in europe and we compare with them and uh, may, many places is still not uh, you know implemented the policies are not implemented 100% uh, but it is going to be more stricter uh, in the times to come and we should be more stricter in the times to come uh, because we need to keep a better place for our children to live after we go from this earth uh, so uh, going into something which is sustainable uh, going into you know biotechnologies which is uh, uh, going to be future uh, going into biodegradable products going into substances which are more from the natural route uh, you know which are sustainable in the making it should not be that we start you know blending ethanol into petrol and uh, ethanol is more harmful uh, in terms of consumption of energy and uh, the uh, uh, the mass uh, to to convert uh, you know into ethanol uh, so, uh, there see, there seems to be now more realization and uh, converting of waste is going to be another big issue अभी तक पानी में हम लोग हाई बीओडी सीओडी टीडीएस देख सकते थे पर ये आगे जाके नहीं हो सकता इन इन द कंट्री एज अ कंपनी रोजारी वी आर वी डू नॉट डू एनीथिंग व्हिच इज पोल्यूटिंग वी डू नॉट प्रोड्यूस एनीथिंग व्हिच व्हिच वी व्हिच वी हैव टू थ्रो आउट एक्सेप्ट फॉर द वॉशिंग ऑल आवर प्रोडक्ट्स व्हाट वी प्रोड्यूस आर ऑल सस्टेनेबल एंड दैट इज बीइंग द डीएनए ऑफ दिस कंपनी बट मोस्ट ऑफ द केमिकल इंडस्ट्री थ्रोस आउट लॉट ऑफ लॉट ऑफ एफर्ट सो दिस हैज टू बी आल्सो अ सर्कुलर इकॉनमी the circular economy now is being practiced in some countries in europe uh, especially uh, belgium and i see finland you know taking a lot of good steps where effluent from one company uh, becomes an input for other company uh, this is something uh, which we need to work uh, uh, we have been traditionally a, a, a country uh, which is you know raised on thrift hamare ko ghar mein waste karne ko nahi sikhaya gaya khane ke thali mein kuch chhodne ka nahi sikhaya gaya so this is something uh, which is which is something which is natural in us and uh, if you see recycling uh, 
uh, we have been primer, premier, you know, uh, the first in the world in everything we recycle. The amount of recycling we do uh, unknowingly is, is tremendous. Uh, so this has this has to go into the chemical industry now, and it is not going to be very very difficult when everybody realizes that uh, partnership is more important than competing. Right, sir. It's a very important, interesting question in the chat uh, by somebody. Uh, they are saying, sir, how do you distinguish between, you know, the commodities and the specialties, uh, uh, specialty chemicals? Anything which requires service, anything which requires innovation, uh, anything requires R&D uh, could be classified as a specialty. Anything which is mass is commodity. Uh, so, uh, uh, this is a simple, I think, uh, uh, classification which I would like to do. Right. So uh, I would, uh, you know, uh, drive a little deeper into that definition. What about, about the dynamics of pass, uh, you know, raw material uh, pass through, sir, uh, for, you know, these two? How amenable are clients to price pass through, uh, given that, you know, crude prices have been rising and along with that, a host of the crude derivative prices are also on a rising trend? So at some point in time, you would have to pass on those costs to your clients. So uh, with respect to these two, uh, how would you uh, sort of differentiate between these? Pass through is something which you know, a commodity and a specialty both have to do. For example, acetic acid. Uh, traditionally, for the past uh, 30 years, I have seen acetic acid prices. They would always go up from 20 rupees to 60 rupees. Uh, first time in my career, I saw it go to 130 rupees. And volatility, uh, I saw it come down from 110 to 90, from 90 to 60 in two days. Uh, and 60 again to 83 rupees in one day. Uh, so, so this is something which no company can absorb. Uh, no. So pass-through has to be done. Uh, where there is over-competition, uh, you know, you can sacrifice your margins. Uh, but a 400% margin, no one has. So whether it's a specialty or a commodity, uh, is more easier in commodity uh, because the margins are anyways less. Uh, in specialty, the pass-throughs uh, you know, take more time uh, because uh, the up and downs do not affect uh, and we see on an annual basis. Uh, uh, when this kind of uh, you know, uh, inflation occurs uh, where there is too much of increase in prices, uh, it has to definitely be passed through. So clients are generally amenable, sir, uh, uh, or is there a, a long lag between, you know, uh, pass-through and uh, uh, raw material price change and price pass-through? So I will I'll give my example, my own example. Hmm. We import, uh, you know, raw material from China. So we did a deal deal of 300 tons uh, with a supplier who has been supplying to us for the last 15 years. And this supplier is a genuine ethical supplier, reliable supplier. He... He came, he, we did a deal for three months. He came back and said, Sir, I can give price for this price. My raw material price has increased. I will absorb it. Uh, my freight has gone up from $600 to $3,000. What do I do? And then he asked us for a $27 per ton increase in price and we were happy to give. We said, we understand. We, we see we have a long relationship. So when you have, when you have a relationship with a with the customer, uh, where it is long, you know, backed by years of, you know, good experience and ethical working, uh, uh, pass through is easy, uh, customers accept. Uh, with, a, with a deal which is signed, which we have, you know, signed together, uh, we, we went ahead and uh, gave an increase. And similarly, we expect this from our customers. Right, right. Uh, sir, uh, now we move to, you know, the China plus one policy. Uh, now, uh, this is uh, uh, much talked about, uh, uh, you know, opportunity for Indian companies. And uh, a lot of companies are, uh, you know, trying to uh, look at it from uh, the point of view of leveraging this opportunity. So which segments do you think would benefit? And are there any cons of latching, uh, you know, to this kind of a bandwagon uh, where you leverage, there is an environmental leverage or environmental, uh, uh, you know, uh, benefit uh, that is, uh, I mean, you know, uh, uh, transferred to India or what? If I had the decision, I would not allow this China plus one products to come into India. Uh, I do not want to pollute my mother earth. Uh, so something which we need to uh, understand, but this is something which is not in our domain. 
um, and uh, people will rush into this. Uh, there will be definitely over production in many and uh, people will neglect some. Uh, uh, we need to understand what to produce. Uh, anything which is polluting, which we cannot keep the effluent, we should not do and we should not allow it. Uh, so this is uh, uh, clearly a game. What is happening is now, uh, in the share markets, it is told, uh, when you sit in a restaurant and the waiter gives you a tip that he stock buy or low, there is a time to exit the share market. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it is it is like this in the chemical industry. People who do not know CEO of chemicals are entering into the chemical industry now. Uh, so they will burn their fingers when they don't understand the market. Uh, some may turn out lucky and, uh, you know, uh, the destiny may help, uh, but many will lose money in, in uh, rushing in the Bhirchal of China plus one, one theory. Uh, we are definitely not looking at the China plus one theory at all. Uh, we are looking at uh, uh, things which are more sustainable and uh, which are more future proof uh, to grow in the future. Right. Sir, that brings me to another uh, very, very important point of the increased ESG compliance. Now, more and more, uh, this COVID uh, impact, uh, the COVID uh, pandemic has, uh, you know, focused on uh, the ESG risks and how companies are mitigating the whole uh, debate about, you know, energy transition and uh, less pollution and all that. So, uh, uh, how do you see the Indian landscape, Indian specialty chemical sector? Hoping with this increased uh, ESG demand for increased uh, ESG compliance, considering that you know you already say that uh, India is one of the strictest uh, pollution uh, you know norms in the world. Uh, we Rosary has been you know blessed with a good uh, 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 number of guides uh, who have guided us on our journey, and uh, this is something which many people ask us why Rosary gets higher valuation than its peers in the specialty chemical industry. And uh, so amongst the ESG, I will start with the governance first. Uh, so the Rosary governance, we give it the highest. Uh, we have been a debt-free uh, debt company, but we also have been litigation-free uh, company for the last 24 years. Uh, uh, if, if you see our board, uh, they are very respected people. Uh, normally people, uh, you know, fill the board with yes, yes men, people switch, who say yes to all what promoters say uh, we went we did not do that and our board always advised us you know even before we listed uh, that good governance uh, will always be preferred by all investors uh, so we you know have focus on good governance uh, if you see your board they know us for more than 10 years minimum uh, uh, the, the, the guides there are knowing, knowing us for 20 years more or more in the uh, in our life uh, uh, secondly, being associated with good quality, you know, uh, bankers, auditors, uh, 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 independent board directors, uh, and even lawyers with good quality uh, help you be on, on the right side uh, of governance. And uh, governance is like a glass, uh, you know, uh, it's like a reputation. Uh, it's something uh, which you take years to build and uh, can be destroyed in a, you know, in a, in a, in a one, one break and you cannot repair it. Uh, in terms of social, uh, it is very, very become important uh, now uh, to give back, uh, you know, to wherever you are. Uh, this is something which is going to be uh, going to going to be more. Uh, the government has mandated CSR, which is two percent of your profits, and we need to do this, uh, you know, very, very happily. Uh, we were at the forefront of COVID. Rosari uh, supported, you know, we are supporting fifty orphanages in Mumbai now since March twenty. Uh, this is something which we are doing happily, uh, you know, and we did a lot. Uh, in fact, we uh, exhausted our CSR uh, requirement already in the first two months in this financial year. And we continue to do our CSR. Uh, in, in terms of also taking care of our own employees, uh, uh, because this is also a responsibility. Uh, just, they are like our family members and we need to uh, be with them. Uh, 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 I'm very happy, you know, to say, uh, that we have created 50 crorepatis in Rosary. Uh, so when we went on IPO, we had 350 members and we gave ease of so, and they're all practically by the worth of the shares and they're all crorepatis. So this is something like a proud feeling. Uh, we started from zero, we borrowed 7 lakh rupees and started. Uh, in terms of environmental, I already you know said that uh, you know uh, this is going to be a uh, future. Uh, I remember you know uh, 10 years ago when my daughter was nine, and we were going from Mumbai to Pune. 
and on the right side uh, you know in the pathogenic area there was a lot of smoke coming out and black smoke coming out and my doctor said why this is happening and this is going to be the future all children in the country are going to ask wapi mein smell kyun aa rahi hai wapi se jayenge to kyun kuch badbu aa rahi hai why amar pani ye from the pani mein color aa raha hai and these are going to be the norms in the future uh, so what we also so we we will get it back uh, हम जो डालेंगे अंदर हमको धरती वापस हो ही जाएगी हम अच्छा करेंगे तो हमको अच्छा ही आना है और बुरा करेंगे तो बुरा ही मिलना है तो ये तो हमारे को हमारे मिडिल क्लास घर में डे वन से सिखाया गया है एंड दिस इज समथिंग विच वी नीड टू फॉलो ई एस जी इज अ ग्लोरीफाइड नॉम बट दिस इज अंपल वे वी कैन थिंक ऑन इट hit us very unexpectedly there is talk about third wave <coughs> so in some areas uh, the uh, uh, the cases remain high uh, such as kerala and all uh, now in case uh, uh, you know so what were, what were the lessons from the first wave that helped in the second wave and could help in the future uh, to mitigate the impact uh, that your company or uh, the industry would have uh, given uh, this uh, pandemic still rages uh life is yet to get back to normal so digital transformation is something which hit us like 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 on the face now uh, so uh, uh, traditionally in the specialty chemical in the chemicals industry in india uh, the top down was say kharcha mat karo computer ko par erp ko par digital ko par uh, devices ko par uh, it change everything so uh, seen promoters uh, or in, you know uh, promoters with some brains uh, <laughs> no choice uh, but we need to adopt uh, rosary was earlier in in this journey uh, we automated our plants uh, uh, we have the latest uh, the dcs system from siemens which is the latest in the world uh, at our plant in dhej which we put up. Uh, in the future what we see is uh, manpower is going to be a big issue uh, first is uh, manpower coming maybe because of uh, government restriction or dar ki ye mere ko covid ho jayega yahan because कोविड इतना बढ़ गया कि हमारे पास आदमी नहीं लूसिंग की पीपल टू टू डिजीजेस कुड बी वन बिग थिंग थर्ड इज ट्रेनिंग न्यू पीपल व्हेन यू डू नॉट हैव गुड पीपल इन द फैक्ट्री नए आदमी आके उसको ट्रेन कौन करेगा हियर यू नो फोर्थ इज आल्सो मेहनत जो पहले करते थे मतलब आज आप देखोगे पहले वर्कर थे हम वर्कर जैसे काम किया है मिल्स में तो हम जो उठा सकते थे हमारे बच्चे नहीं उठा सकते उतना उतना मटेरियल या पचास किलो का डब्बा कंधे पे उठाना बोला तो इम्पॉसिबल है सो दिस वॉज समथिंग यू नो इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ चेंज इन न्यूट्रिशन एंड अवर यू नो डाइटरी कल्चर वी विल नीड टू गो मोर ऑटोमेटेड वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू हैव पीपल कमिंग ऑन वर्किंग इन द केमिकल इंडस्ट्री वेरी हैप्पीली सो सो ट्रेनिंग ऑफ पीपल ऑटोमेशन रोबोटिक्स Uh, uh, digital uh, transformation of the company uh, making uh, you know smart manufacturing uh, where the vessels talk to each other or uh, you know where where every, everything which can be automated uh, is done uh, warehousing automation uh, these are areas uh, for the chemical industry uh, to go for the future right sir brilliant uh, sir uh, now uh, when we look at the specialty chemicals industry unlike other industries you know companies uh, and including rosari you know uh, uh, you know in companies also put out that you know we specialize in certain chemistries they move along certain chemistries uh, so uh, as a strategy uh, is chemistry central or the products by the same client are what you look at for you know introduction of new products uh, and uh, related question was is sir uh, what is the kind of strategy with regard to you know new product introductions what what targets do you have uh, for uh, you know acquiring what percentage of the revenue from new products uh, internally uh, we have a theory that you know 30% uh, you know is it's a dream we are not able to achieve it still uh, that 30% of products should be new every 4 years uh, mm-hmm. this is something which we want to uh, you know follow as a innovation model model and uh, we have been normally in wherever we operate uh, we have been leaders in our innovation and that is why we have grown so well in the uh, you know uh, in our uh, journey in rosari uh, this new product development has to happen uh, the world 
in the, in the, in the share market world of the share markets, only it looks at return on capital, uh, return on capital employed or return on investment capital. And uh, ICRA and the rating agencies also look at the same, same uh, parameter. Uh, so everything, every rupee we invest, we have to see what is going to be uh, the return out of it. Uh, uh, so maybe uh, some things which we, we do, we, we may get return two, three, four years from now. Uh, for example, water treatment chemicals is something which we are investing in. And uh, this is a service model uh, with a lot of investment in understanding what the effluent is for each industry. and. Uh, this kind of R&D is not being done. People are copying. Uh, you know, what are the water treatment chemical companies in the product? They have to go to the factory and recipe and make a product. Bana ke becho. This is not the future. Uh, but future is going to be new demands from the pollution control boards. Uh, there will be no new guidance on environmental. And we need to be prepared and be, be proactive in our thinking on what is the future like. Uh, so we at Rosari are, you know, focusing on these kind of uh, uh, factors uh, where we get maximum out of every rupee we invest in. Uh, Rosary has uh, ROC of 20 to 20 percent plus, in fact, 25 percent plus, uh, but because we invested in uh, new companies now, uh, it would be 20 percent plus. Uh, but we are looking at giving, uh, uh, you know, uh, the weighted average cost of capital is something which we want to exceed in, in every rupee of money which we spend. Uh, so it could be not industry specific. Uh, if we make a chemical, uh, for example, if we make acrylic acid polymer, uh, which industries it can go to? Uh, so we don't don't put us as industry, but we put it as us what our factories can produce, so that we don't put a lot of money in our cap in our in our cap, cap expansion plan. Uh, so I was saying, you know, informally with the board, and they said, now Rosary Bhajaradhi ko par ho gaya. Now we need to have a central office. We need to buy a central office. Uh, I am not a finance man. I said, nee, bhai. Capital employee So the trend would be uh, using less amount of money to get higher returns. Uh, that would be the focus for us. Uh, sir, uh, you know, there are a lot of questions on, you know, which segments uh, uh, would be, you know, the key or the fastest growing segments going forward uh, of within the specialty chemical space. Some you mentioned, obviously, which are, you know, the sunrise sectors of this, uh, this thing. But, uh, uh, sir, any others? And also there is this uh, question about, you know, how big is a CRAMS opportunity going to be? Uh, or rather co uh, contract manufacturing uh, for, you know, the Indian companies. Uh, so your views on that, sir? Uh, for Rosari personally, uh, you know, and for me personally, CRANS is not something which is for an area for us to focus, but it's a very big opportunity. Uh, companies are tying up with, you know, big companies globally because uh, India is very, very good in manufacturing. Uh, uh, but CRANS also is uh, related to high hazardous and highly polluting products now, which is coming into the industry, which we do not want to go clearly. Um, uh, but uh, CRANS into uh, products for you know, uh, EV, uh, the mobility sector or the telecommunication sector is something which is, uh, you know, very, very uh, a focused area for us for the future. Uh, pharma, you know, in terms of high specialty uh, products, experience not into APIs uh, would be a focus area for us. Personal care additives, you know, would be a focus area, uh, you know, uh, for us to grow. Uh, so these are uh, uh, good areas for every specialty chemical manufacturer to grow. Uh, the consumption, uh, you know, agrochemicals, again, uh, you know, uh, formulation. So if you see uh, the amount of uh, agrochemical active intermediates being exported uh, compared to the formulation, uh, now com formulation is value addition. Uh, what India has to look for is more value addition. As we were doing cotton export, it was made from cotton, then it was made from fabric, then it was made from apparel. In apparel, there is value, value, value added apparel. Hai. Uh, so in textile also where we are, uh, we are looking at how we can go up the chain, uh, how we can increase the gear from first to second to third and fourth, uh, what is required in the future. Uh, this is something uh, which every specialty chemical manufacturer should focus on. Right. 
um yeah sir and now uh, sir another question very pertinent to rozari and the industry uh, because we know that a number of uh, companies in this space are looking at you know org- uh, inorganic means of growth so so what would be when you go out uh, looking for a company what is your uh, you know list or uh, of requirements uh, uh, if you could throw some light on that so luckily we have a good you know team of guides who guide us and they make uh, things difficult for us and when things are difficult uh, there lies some opportunity uh, you know which could be very good uh, so for example typically mergers and acquisitions fail uh, one big uh, you know reason is paying cost uh, so paying a very high ebitda multiple is something which is not uh, you know our cup of tea and uh, we do not do it and uh, the, the second uh, you know uh, acquisition skill is also because of cultural hum sochte hain ki hum hushar hain jo company ko acquire kiya usme sab gadhe baithe hue hain aur hum unko sikhayenge ja ke to they are all good companies uh, who are doing well and that is why we have gone and gone or uh, good companies go uh, you know and acquire companies who are good uh, so uh, and we need to see the goodness in them and and use this goodness to improve ourselves uh, it could be the reverse uh, kind of thinking and that is what we think Uh, uh, companies we have acquired have good promoters, good management staff, and good management leaders, um, and uh, good practices in terms of performance and uh, production and R&D. And uh, this is something which is very important for us. Uh, third is, uh, you know, profitability. Uh, the company has to be profitable, not in distress. Uh, fourth is debt. The company should not have, you know, high debt. Uh, fifth, you know, uh, I was uh, discussing informally with the board. Uh, there are two ways to think of uh, you know uh, funding and acquisition either take debt or you know you know do it with the stock uh, our board says do with the stock and there is like we did a preferential uh, you know raise of 300 crores in april and funded and we are still debt free uh, you know uh, as a company uh, but i was uh, reading an article by warren buffet and uh, he you know uh, uh, invested in a company uh, very invested 220 million and became zero and he said that i did not lose 220 million it is i lost 1 billion because the money the stock which i gave to them is one was worth 1 billion uh, so he is opponent so uh, uh, there are different theories uh, and being a zero debt is not a very good financial decision uh, we need to have some debt on books uh, but doing uh, using too much debt for acquisition is not the right way uh, is uh, something which we think uh, 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 being in good sectors which are future Uh, proof or uh, in the sunlight areas is something which is very important. Uh, overlap on your present customers or manufacturing capability uh, should be avoided. Uh, 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 being in the same industry just to take market share acquisition is not something which our board advises us. Uh, we do not want to do, do that. Uh, it is too expensive way of uh, you know acquiring market share. Uh, uh, I think uh, these are. Uh, major parameters uh, which we look at uh, when we do the acquisitions right uh, so thank you so much uh, for your time i have uh, uh, completed most of the questions that are there in the chat box as well as what was sent to us through email uh, so uh, i would hand it over to mr sabir sachi majumdar uh, for the closing comments yeah thanks prashant uh, uh mr chari really wanted to thank you for you know taking out your valuable time uh, to be a part of our uh, webinar and i'm sure it has it has been very enlightening to me and i'm sure uh, you know our uh, audience would have also uh, learned a lot from you know what you have shared with us uh, i would like to also uh, thank all the, all of uh, all the people here who have taken their valuable time to be a part of our program and given their you know question and answers and finally my colleagues uh prashant sai and varun for having put up this presentation uh even otherwise you know we are very active uh, you know we come out with uh, you know lot of research publications uh, on this industry as well as uh, various other industry related to the energy space uh so if you have any questions please feel free to get in touch with any of us uh, you know our emails are available you can get in touch with us and on that note uh, i wish farewell to all of you thank you again very much for being a part of our show thank you sir thank you